Hi everyone. So today's what is video uh, will be over pericardial effusion. Uh, so before we just wade off into the topic and I just tell you what a pericardial effusion is, let's take a second and break the word down so we can get a sense of what it is that we're talking about. This is just good practice to know the roots uh, when you have a lot of confusing medical terminology. So I'll give you a clue as to what you're looking into. So the first root that we're interested in is card, um, which should tell you that we're talking about some aspect of the heart, right, like cardiac. The other root that we're interested in is peri, which we know from words like perimeter, and just means around. So in this case, what we're talking about is an anatomical structure called the pericardium, which is essentially a sac made of tough connective tissue that's surrounding the heart. So on any given day the pericardium will serve a lot of different functions um, but for our topic we're just going to focus on the fact that it has a role in limiting the expansion of the heart. Uh, so let's say if for some reason the ventricles of the heart were to become overfilled the pericardium could apply a force to resist that expansion. So let's use a metaphor here. Um, think of the heart as a thin water balloon that's nested within a, a super thick water balloon that we'll call the pericardium. So if the inner balloon expands too far, it's going to run into the less expandable outer balloon. And when it does that, that outer balloon is going to uh, prop it up uh, and support it and essentially, most importantly, keep it from popping. Um, so the worst cases of pericardial effusion, uh, which are known as cardiac tamponade, uh, result when the support function of the pericardium backfires. And you'll see why in a second here. So now let's add in the word effusion, which we know means the flow of a fluid through a small opening. So if we put that together with what we already know, we can deduce that a pericardial effusion is the flow of a fluid, usually blood, through a small opening in the heart into uh, the pericardial cavity. And now this opening can come about for a variety of different reasons. Uh, we could be talking about a heart attack, right? Uh, cancer can cause um, can cause this to to come about. You can have a malignancy that that weakens the wall. Uh, of the heart. You can have a trauma to the chest, so blunt force trauma. Um, you can even have a, a virus or a bacterial infection that causes a uh, inflammation in the pericardium that's known as pericarditis. Um, it's a little terrifying to think that a bacterial infection could cause something so serious. Um, so in some cases the pericardial effusion um, will disappear in a number of weeks. In other cases, um, it's, it's going to be there, but it's not going to be letting so much blood through that it's dangerous, right? Um, but in some cases, it can, it can let so much blood into the, pericardi into the pericardial cavity um, that it actually uh, inhibits the heart's ability to function properly. Um, to explain this, let's go back to our water balloon example. So you can imagine filling the space between the outer and inner balloons uh, with so much water that the pressure um, that this water exerts on the inner balloon keeps the inner balloon from being able to expand as far as it could have before you had all this water in there. Um, this is what a cardi cardiac tamponade is. It's essentially when you have so much back pressure on the heart as a result of this fluid that the heart can't function properly. And you know, the heart in this case is literally swimming uh, in a sack filled with, uh, with fluid and blood. So, okay, so how can we be on the lookout for pericardial effusions? Well, sometimes they present with symptoms, sometimes they don't. Um, when they do, you're going to see uh, symptoms that are similar to what you would see in a heart attack, shortness of breath, and chest pain. Um, 
as the effusion sort of grows into a cardiac tamponade, the situation becomes a little bit more critical, obviously, uh, and the patient's going to start exhibiting signs of shock. So you'll see an elevated heart rate, there'll be shortness of breath, um, and the patient will most likely not be fully conscious. They'll be confused. Um, so in addition to those signs of shock, if you're suspecting cardiac tamponade, there are three symptoms that you can look for that are affectionately known as Beck's triad. So the first and most obvious symptom is the distended jugular. So because the venous return to the heart has been diminished and backed up, the jugular vein is going to jump out of the neck. So you, you'll be able to see that. Um, the second thing is low arterial pressure. So because less blood is getting into the heart, each pump is not going to produce the same amount of, uh, of pressure uh, in the arterial system as it would have otherwise. So be on the lookout for low blood pressure. And the third thing are uh, muffled heart sounds. So if you were to listen to the heart with a stethoscope, it would sound distant and quiet. Um, you can imagine that there's just all this water surrounding the heart that's going to diminish the sound energy getting to the stethoscope. Um, you can also look for an abnormal uh, drop in blood pressure when the patient breathes in. And by abnormal, um, they say more than 10 mmHg. And obviously the surest way to check for a, a pericardial effusion or for a cardiac tamponade is to do an echocardiogram or a chest x-ray. Uh, in which case the, um, the heart is going to look enlarged. So as you can imagine, um, preventing this sort of medical situation is hard to do, um, given that it's, it only comes on uh, at certain times, sometimes with symptoms, sometimes without. Um, but there are a couple of situations where you can be on the lookout uh, for, for cardiac tamponade and for pericardial effusions. So one is right after a heart attack, when the lining of the heart has been weakened. You know, some of the musculature is going to die as a result of the heart attack. Um, so that's one situation we should be on the lookout for a pericardial effusion. The other uh, is when a patient has uh, heart surgery and um, the cardiologist put chest tubes into their chest to drain blood that collects in the, um, in the chest cavity uh, after the surgery. So what can happen is those chest tubes um, can uh, clot. There can be clots and um, generally it, they can just back up uh, if you're not careful and if that blood backs up and pressure builds up the flow of blood can be back into the chest cavity uh, which can lead to a cardiac tamponade. Um, so that concludes our video. Hope it's been helpful and thank you for watching.